Deuteronomy chapter 13. 13 in the Bible rebellion. And there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or wonder. Look at that. Here's a prophet or a dreamer and the signs come to be, the wonders come to be. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. It happens. Jews require a sign, but let's read on. Wherefore he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Here is a man who is capable of signs and wonders, and he does it to bring you away from God. The Antichrist will do signs and wonders before the people. The charismatic movement will do signs and bark at the moon or whatever they call it to get you away from the God of the Bible. There are prophets out there, according to the Bible, they will do you wonders. They will do Christian magic for you and it will look like it's happened and to pull you away from God. Jews require a sign. So what they do is they do signs to fool the Jews. This is looking definitely into the future into the tribulation period. This is looking at any prophet who is able to do any trickery. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. I have a dream. And that man met MLK was called the American prophet. And the black people in America have not been the same since. The churches have not been the same since. You say whatever you want to say. You are very rarely the hand of a man today, black, that has your, in your hand a gospel tract and will they receive it. It's just what it is. I have a dream. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So there's probably, there, there's a prophet that has signs and wonders. They come to pass and God may have sent that prophet to check your heart, to check your standing. You shall walk out to the Lord your God and fear him. And keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. So, if a man comes and teaches you not the Lord God that brought you out of Egypt, the Jews, and has taught you to fear another God, to keep another God's commandment, and obey another God, and serve another God, and cleave to another God, you're not to. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. Ye shall not serve, I mean, ye shall serve him and cleave unto him and no other gods. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, capital punishment. Why? Because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. <coughs> Um, you know how many of these false prophets have come out of the fruit of America? The charismatic movement, the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, uh, Mary Baker Eddy, I forget what, what, what hers is. Do a search, a Google search in religions that are founded out of America. You'll be quite shocked to find out how many are the fruits of this wickedness that the Bible says get rid of them. America has produced false prophets. Television. How many times have you heard in America some guys say, Well, Jesus Christ is coming this month, this day, this year. Boom, it passes. That guy's a false prophet and he's yet still on the radio and yet he's still on the television and they don't get rid of him. And he just, oh, I made a mistake and then rewrites his book for another day. 
When the Jehovah Witnesses have told you three times that Jesus Christ was supposed to come and he has it, you are a false prophet, you are not a Jehovah Witness. When a man tells you that in New York City or New York, upper New York, he's seen a blown eye angel, and the Bible says you're not you're not going to see that. The angels are not going to tell you anything but to go get a Bible believer. That's a false witness. And God says you're not to hear to it. And God says, I'm, I'm here to prove you with that. I want to see what you're going to do. And many people have fallen for it. Shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so for the Jews, what is God? Who is God? That's the one that brought you out of Egypt. Those are the ones, that's the God that gave you all those signs and all those wonders that no one else can do. Now when you do a study of the Antichrist in the book of Revelation, he's going to do some mighty wonders too. He's going to make an image or an idol, whatever you look at. He's going to make it talk. Now, I was a little boy. I had a mall, but uh, every Christmas they would have these display of these mannequins that move. Well, that's nothing compared to what the Antichrist is going to do. And God has warned them in the law. When that man does those wonders, and the Bible says they're in awe, they make merry, they pass out gifts because he's killed the prophet, and he is killed himself, and he comes resurrected. God says, You better be careful. You better be careful when, when people are speaking tongues and all that today. That's not for the church. Those are signs. And the tongues are for a sign to those who don't believe, Paul said. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt. So the God of the Jews is the one that brought them out of Egypt. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage. God paid for them. God bought them. Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No other God. Which has redeemed you of the house of bond, Egypt, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. These people are here to get you away from God, to get you to think you're doing right. And Jesus said, Well, Lord, but the people, Lord, didn't I do this? Didn't I do beads? Didn't I have this religion? Wasn't I baptized for salvation? Didn't I was a good person? Depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But wasn't I? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You did not serve God. I had a conversation with with a guy today about that. The flip mark. You got to do what the Bible says. The Bible is the standard, and the Bible will tell you who God is and who God isn't. And the Bible will tell you who God, what God will do, and what He will not do. And with the result of that, which is removed from Bible, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And there are people, you say, this is the law, and there are people today who are out there with wonders, there, there are all kinds of doctors, there are all kinds of teaching, and when a woman gets up before people and starts telling you what the Bible says, and the Bible says a woman is not to assert the authority over man, you got to turn her off. I don't care how well she teaches. you got to turn her off because the Bible says no. When a man gets up and says, call us fathers, the Bible says no. you got to turn them off. you got to rightly divide your Bible. And God has given us a book, and God has given us a way to know what is right and wrong. So when you stand at the great right throne judgment, there's the book. And anybody in 2018 has no excuse. Because you can get the book over the internet. You can get the book in the bookshelf. You can get it free. It's able and it's opportunity to get the King James Bible. You've got more resources than from Jesus to Paul to the 1600 and to the Geneva Bible. You have more resources than any of those people. Because they couldn't get the Bible. There was no complete Bible with Paul. And so when somebody comes knocking at your door, here, we got this stuff right here, listen to what we have, you're going to open up your Bible and say, okay, let's check you out. When somebody says you're supposed to do this for God, open the Bible and say, am I supposed to do that for God? It's simple. Which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. So 
What about the law? Am I supposed to follow the law? The law says no. We're under grace. The law is to show that I'm a sinner. I read through the law and say, like, uh-oh, I do that. I'm not supposed to do that. For a clear testimony before God and before the public and before Christians. I'm not supposed to do that. That's what the law shows me. It's not for means of salvation. Now, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul, your very closest friend. This would be David and Jonathan. Where David and Jonathan said they love each other. There it is right there. It's not sodomite. Entice thee secretly. You mean uh, secret organizations? You mean, you know, secret handshakes? Spouse? No one else can know in this club but members? Let us, that's bad letters right there. Let us go serve other gods. So when they come knocking at your door, first question to ask them, is your Jesus God? Well, no, that's other gods. And Paul told us, there's another Jesus. My God is Jesus. And my Jesus is God. Which thou has not known, Thou nor thy, fa nor thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and twelve tribes. Namely of the gods of the people which are round about you. Nigh unto thee, or far off from thee. Whether they're in your neighborhood, or outside your neighborhood, in your country, or out of the world. Any of those gods. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of it. Does God really say it plainly in verse 7? No other gods thou shalt not consent unto them the person that's trying to get you away nor hearken unto them that guy today was sitting there trying to get no I'm not going to listen to you I'm going to tell you what the Bible says now I'm going to interrupt you every time you try to say something stupid and give you what the Bible says neither shall thy I pity him your, your husband your wife your son your friend, your very close friend, if they're trying to get you to go after another God, you got to depart. Neither shall thou spirit, neither shall thou conceal. Now today, the Bible, today in the church, we don't go kill them. That's a that's the government's job. Romans thirteen, the Bible says we're to love our enemies, but we depart from. Them. We have no fellowship with those who are not doing right, including Christians. But thou shalt surely kill him. I thought you said thou shalt not kill. There's the word kill. God accepts killing a man because they are trying to turn you away from him. That is a sentence brought down by God the judge. Don't judge me. On someone who's trying to pervert the nation. When these educators and these philosophers and Spock and all them try to teach you another way to raise your children, the country should have executed them and got rid of them. And those who did not want the Bibles in the school and those who wanted evolution in the school, this country was supposed to get rid of them. But you didn't. And look at the mess you're in and stop crybabying about it. Where were the Christians standing up at Scope's trial? Where were they? They remained silent. So now you have evolution in schools and you have no Bible. Shut up. Don't even say another word because you didn't do nothing. But go ahead and vote. Vote all you want. Every time you vote, you get idiots and, and, and wicked people in, in Washington in your government. Keep voting for them. Keep listening to their lies. I don't vote. Turn off some people on that one. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. Now what's that cause? That's conscience. This man has been charged with the death penalty. All right. And you, the Bible says two or three witnesses. Those two or three witnesses, you pick up the first stones and you hurl. 
Your conscience is supposed to say, if you're telling a lie. Oh. Wait a minute. I lied. I blurred you myself. That's what that's saying. For your conscience is supposed to work. What, what about you know killing somebody on death row by accident? If you pull the witnesses and say, okay, come over here. You, you three, you put that needle in his arm. You pull that switch. I wonder how it would be then. If they were telling the truth, boom. If they're not, hopefully their conscience will work. Be the first upon to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. You're supposed to have your conscience. If they are lying, they're not going to go all the way through. You have liars. All have sin. The wages of sin is death. You do will get people who are executed wrongly. But then again, we're all sinners. We all deserve the death penalty. The wages of sin is death. This may not have been charged with that particular crime. Really, the face of the fact is, when we look at our lives, we have been guilty of one law or 14 million of them. And thou shalt stone him with stone. That is a brutal death. Oh, the death penalty should be remain and, and proper. God says stone him. That he died. Because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God. That's a serious charge. That violates the first commandment. That violates the Bible's second commandment. That violates the third commandment of the Bible. I say the Bible because there's, you know, second commandments removed from some commandments. Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. That is your God, Israel. From the house of bondage. That Antichrist did not bring you out of Egypt. And all Israel shall hear and fear. That's what capital funds are supposed to do. Oh man, if I do that crime, that's what's going to happen to me. That don't look fun. That does not look like I'm going... And then when you're going to want to do that crime... Ooh... I remember what they did to Tom. I remember what they did to Harry. I wonder what they did to Sally. Hey. You know, all those times those people died in the wilderness. It was brought up. You know, as the Lord did to this family. As the Lord did to these people. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Better back off. Better do it right. And shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. What's the wickedness? Going after another God. If thou shalt say, if thou shalt hear in one of thy cities, the verses one to eleven was an individual. If thou shalt hear say one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God has given thee to dwell therein, saying, Now here is a whole city. Certain men, the children of Belial, wicked men, perverted men unholy men, unrighteous men, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, have gathered a group of people out of their cities to come up with the junk they have today. The Mormons moved from New York City to Utah, mostly with the law chasing them. And their leader ended up in jail being killed by a bunch of men who their wives were trashed by their enemy. That's the history. Saying, let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Balaam did that. And look where he ended up. Dead in battle. Then thou shalt inquire. Look into it. Investigate it. And make search. Search the inquirement and ask diligently. Ask questions. Make sure it is answered. Make sure you got the right answer. Make sure now you inquired and make sure now you search and double. Make sure the thing is true and right. And behold, if it be true, truth, and be a certain. I mean, a thing certain 
that such abominations wrought among you. I had a church one time come up to me for membership. Oh, this guy says you were doing something vile and wicked. No. Okay, you're a member of our church. That's it. You just gonna you're not gonna look into the matter. You're not gonna search it out like the Bible says. And then you're gonna allow that other man to still be in your church, which was lies. A pastor's job is to inquire, make search, and, and diligently ask questions of someone who's going to join their church, or someone who's involved in their church, or somebody has brought up a false report about somebody in the church. See, somebody has brought up a false accusation or brought up a true accusation, either or, in the land of Israel, and God says, okay, here's that accusation. You better go inquire. You better go search. You better go ask. And behold, if it be true and if it be certain you better make sure that such abominations wrought among you thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword look how god is he says if you're in idolatry you hate me if you're trying to get another god you are an abomination wipe you out by stoning you or go in there with war Smite the city with an edge of the sword, destroying it utterly. Leave nothing behind. And all that is therein, and the cattle thereof. Don't even take the moo moos. With the edge of the sword. Why? Cattle is one of the things that was worship. That cow, that moo moo, that calf, the, the bull, those things are worshipped worldwide in all, mostly all religions. The running of the bulls. Billions and billions served. Hot and juicy. We have it rare. And I shall gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof and shall burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof, every whit. For the Lord thy God, it shall be and heat forever. It shall not be built again. That entire city, you burn and everything. You don't take nothing home with you. I think God's serious. I think God is serious when they try to pull you away from the true living God to a big fat soul sitting over Italy. I think God's serious. Yeah, that guy's not God. He's reverent as God. We've seen today three shrines to that fat idiot in Italy at a flea market. But that's okay because commandment number two is removed out of the book. So interesting. And there shall cleave not of the cursed thing. Oh man, I was going to say his name went right on my mind. Achan. He was his whole entire family was stoned. His cattle were stoned. That's coming up in Joshua. Thy hand that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger. You know why God destroyed Judah the first time in Jeremiah? Because they were worshipping other gods. They were worshipping Christmas trees. They were worshipping the Queen of Heaven. They were making little round cakes to her. In the book of Judges, you got a man who's a priest and he's calling him father. And there's winged angels in uh, one of the minor prophets flying around. Nonsense. There shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thy hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his, his anger, and show thee mercy, and have compassion upon thee, and multiply thee, as he has sworn unto thy father, after you destroy that city, after you kill that man. God says, okay, you've done right. Thou shalt not kill. What are you going to do? When thou hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. Now we got a problem. 
and I'm kicking the churches because they're wrong. There's a group, there's a church who has a group of people who went out killing people as infidels. And today you got a, you got a mass group of people killing infidels. In the name of God, of course. And they get it out of the Old Testament, but we're not in the Old Testament. The New Testament to the Christian who's born again, who's a Bible believer, who wants to obey God, who has trusted in the shed work and the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. It was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. A man that has a new birth. God does not tell them, go and kill all these people. He tells them, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And let God handle it. God says, vengeance is mine. I, God, I will repay. Not you. You just go tell them what the Bible says. You let them be without excuse, according to the gospel, according to the belief in Jesus Christ. And what they do with that, that's between them and God. They won't get involved in dollies. They won't get involved in, in, in false worship. They won't get whatever the religious and stuff like that's out there. You tell them the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Now that's between them and God. You've done your part. You preach the gospel. They won't stay in their sin. They won't be in their darkness. John chapter 3, then they're in condemnation. That's between them and God. We're not to kill. But Romans 13 says that's the government's power. A nation should not give them freedom. But what are you going to do? Look at the mess we're in. 